uh, good evening all of you so this is our fifth session so this is our fifth session so let's begin with the session first question so in the first question this is a get 2021 question it came in set 1 so in the first question the uh, ammonia nitrogen has been in the first question ammonia nitrogen they say that the ammonia nitrogen is present in given wastewater sample as the ammonium ion and ammonia so if the ph is only the deciding factor for the proportion of two constituent which of the following factor will be correct is correct so they have given four options let's let's first understand what are the uh, forms in which ammonia exist am i audible yes sir you are audible okay okay so in this question they have uh, uh, mentioned that ammonia exist in two forms one is ionized form that is ammonium ion and another one is unionized form that is ammonia so based on the ph they are telling in what proportion these uh, both the uh, forms will exist so basically the uh, presence of nitrogen so we will first understand the basic concepts of ammonia the presence of nitrogen basically indicates the presence of organic matter presence of nitrogen indicates the presence of organic matter organic matter now basically nitrogen exist in three forms first form is free ammonia first form is free ammonia it indicates recent pollution it indicates recent pollution so it uh, generally it exists in the form of nh4 plus and nh3 ammonia ion and ammonia that is free ammonia second form exists as organic ammonia organic ammonia it indicates the quantity of nitrogen indicates quantity of nitrogen before decomposition has started before decomposition has started and it remains basically this form occurs uh, remains in bonded form with urea and protein remain in bonded form with urea and protein so free ammonia exists indicates recent pollution whereas organic ammonia indicates the quantity of nitrogen before decomposition has started generally organic ammonia remains in the bonded form with urea and protein whereas free ammonia exists in the form of ammonia ion and ammonia the other two forms are nitrite that is the third form these are the first form this is first this is second this one is third nitrite it indicates partial decomposed condition partial decomposed condition fourth form is nitrate it indicates old pollution it indicates old pollution so we know now that there are three forms one is free ammonia other one is organic ammonia third is nitrite and last one is nitrate so now coming back to the question based on the ph how which form exist so based on the ph if ph of base water is below 8 that means all ammonia is in all ammonia is in the nh4 plus form this you remember form so if ph is less than 1 less than 8 sorry 
if pH is less than 8, all ammonia is in the NH4 plus form. At pH equals to 9.5, this is 9.5, there 50 percent of ammonia and 50 percent of ammonium exist. Means NH4 plus. And here it is NH3. So when pH is less than 8, all ammonia is in ammonium form. Whereas at pH 9.5, 50% ammonia exists and ammonium exists. Uh, reduce the. So whereas at pH, if pH is greater than 11, all ammonia, all ammonia is in the form of. All ammonia is in the form of NH3 ammonia. So I hope this is clear. Once again, I will explain. So first of all, we know that the nitrogen presence of nitrogen indicates the presence of organic matter. Nitrogen exists in three form, four forms: free ammonia, which indicates recent pollution, and it exists in the form of ammonium and ammonia. Then other one, second one is organic ammonia. It indicates quantity of nitrogen before decomposition has started. It generally remains in bonded form with urea and protein. The third one is nitrite, indicates partial decomposed condition. Fourth is nitrate, indicates cold pollution. Coming back to the pH. Now one concept is over till here. Now coming back to the pH. If the pH is less than 8, all ammonia is in the ammonium form. At pH 9.5, 50% ammonium and 50% ammonium exist. At pH greater than 11, all ammonia is in the form of ammonia. Having, after not knowing this concept, now let's back to the question. If pH is the only deciding factor of the two questions, which of the following is correct? At pH above 9.25, only ammonia will be present, which is not correct here. So. At above pH 9.0, above pH 9.0, ammonia will be freed out. This is also incorrect. So at pH 7, ammonia and ammonia were found in the equal measures. This is incorrect. At pH 7, ammonia will be predominant. This is correct. This is correct because I have already mentioned at pH less than 8, all ammonia is in the ammonium form. So I hope the first question is clear. Is it clear? So now I will proceed with the second question. So second question tells the sedimentation basin in a water treatment plant is designed for a flow rate of 0.2 meter cube per second. The basin is rectangular with a length of 32 meter, width of 8 meter and depth of 4 meter. Assume that settling velocity of the particle is governed by Stokes law. Governed by the Stokes law. Given the density of particle, density of water, dynamic viscosity of the water, gravitational acceleration, then they are telling if the incoming water particle water contains particles of diameter 25 micrometer, the removal efficiency of these particles is. So they have given four options. 51%, 65%, 78%, 100%. Now, since they have mentioned that the assume that the setting velocity of the particle is governed by the Stokes law. No? So, for setting velocity, we know. So, the approach of the quotient will be like first we have to calculate the settling velocity. Since it is governed by the Stokes law, so Vs will be. Settling velocity Gs minus 1, density of water G d square divided by 18 mu. Mu here. So, so Gs is, so they have given uh, uh, density of the particle is 2.5 gram. Density of the water is 1 gram per centimeter cube. Dynamic viscosity of the water is 0 
so knowing this so 2.5 minus density of the water has been given as 980 here the so, uh, density of the water is 1 gram sorry density of the water has been given as 1 gram into gravitation acceleration is 980 cm square 980 and d they have given as the diameter they have mentioned as 25 micrometer so here we can write 25 micrometer so converting into centimeter it will be so the other uh, uh, dynamic viscosity they have given is 0.01 gram so vf will come out to be 0.051 cm per second so now we have calculated the settling velocity now set, after calculating settling velocity they are basically asking us the given the density of particle the removal efficiency for removal efficiency we know we need settling velocity settling velocity as well as forward flow rate surface overflow rate since they have given us q as 0.2 m3 per second so given flow rate is 0.2 m3 per second so now surface overflow rate we have already discussed in our previous lectures that it is q by bl now q, discharge we know 0.2 m3 per second b the length uh, breadth and the length they have mentioned here as width width the weight meter the length is 32 meter so 8 into 32 this will come out to be 0.2 upon 256 so this is 7.81 into 10 to the power minus 4 meter per second this will come out to be 7.81 10 to the power minus 4 meter per second now we for formula partial removal efficiency partial removal efficiency is vs by v not settling velocity by overflow rate into 100 we have calculated the settling velocity here as 0.051 cm per second 0.051 cm per second and if we convert this to cm per second 7.81 to 10 raised to minus 5 uh, cm per second we will get 0.078 into 100 this is decimals so we will get around 65.38% so 65.38% will be a, will the is the answer so so here option b is correct uh is it clear or should i explain once again hello Sir, clear, sir. Okay. So, uh, so I will again uh, repeat the solution. So, the basically they have given some information regarding the configuration of sedimentation basin like length, width, and depth. So, they have given the dynamic viscosity, other required data as well, and they are asking the removal efficiency of the particle is. So, we know that the removal efficiency we calculate using for sedimentation tank v not vs by v not setting velocity up, upon surface of rate into 100 all this concept i have already discussed in the previous lectures so to know the efficiency we need that we need to calculate the settling velocity and the surface overflow rate we know the surface settling velocity based on the stokes law as i have mentioned gs minus 1 g rho w 
d square upon 18 mu and surface overflow rate also we know q upon bl after calculating all this we can easily calculate the efficiency of the part removal efficiency of the particle so i hope this is clear so coming back to the next question the next question says a 0.8 meter depth bed of sand filter uh, length and width is mentioned 4 meter and 3 meter is made of uniform particle the di diameter is also mentioned of the uniform particle 0.40 mm and specific gravity is 2.65 shape factor is 0.85 with bed porosity of 0.4 the bed has to be backwashed at a flow rate of 3.60 meter cube per minute during backwashing if the terminal settling velocity of the sand particle is the expanded bed length is now the concept here will be we know the formula of the length of the expanded bed is lx is equals to 1 minus porosity on of the initial before expansion and divided by 1 minus porosity so here this is the length of the length before expansion porosity before expansion this is the porosity of the expanded bed so knowing this formula so we know so other thing required is we know porosity of the expanded bed is vb by vt raised to power 0.22 knowing this from so these two formula basically we will be using to solve the question so here backwash velocity they have mentioned as c point backwash velocity we have to calculate but they have given the settling velocity as 0.05 this is settling velocity of the sand particle terminal settling velocity of the sand particle 0.05 now first we will calculate the porosity of the expanded bed that is vb by vt divided by 0.22 for now we they haven't mentioned about the backwash velocity vb so vb we will calculate by q upon bl q mentioned in the question is 3.60 meter cube per minute 3.60 meter cube per minute divided by b b is 3 meter and l is 4 meter so it will be 12 b is how much b is 3 into 4 3 into 4 now vb is basically 3.6 but by 12 but here you can see it is mentioned in the unit as meter cube per minute we will convert into second so therefore we will uh, add 6 multiply by 60 in the denominator so here we will get 0.005 meter per second i hope till here it is clear now we calculate the backwash velocity terminal settling velocity we already know so from there we can calculate any x is equals to 0.005 terminal settling velocity they have mentioned 0.05 so 0.05 divided by 0.22 so if you calculate this is 0.22 if you calculate now and any, any uh, porosity of the expanded bed will be 0.6025 so after knowing the porosity of the expanded bed so in this formula we calculated this porosity of the expanded bed we now have to calculate the length of uh, depth of the expanded bed this is the ex depth of the expanded bed and this is the uh, depth before expansion so lex is equals to 1 minus so they have mentioned uh, bed porosity 0.4 initial bed porosity 0.4 1 minus 0.4 divided by the porosity which we calculated as 0.60255 
is multiplied with the uh, depth. De this is the initial depth. That L x here means the depth of the filter bed after expansion, expanded bed depth, and this is this L here means the before expansion. So 0.8 meter we have to multiply. So the final depth will come out to be 1.2076 meter. So this is the final answer. If anyone has any doubt, you can ask the question. Is it clear? Yes, sir. Okay. Now we will move to the next question. So once again, I will uh, just explain it. I will summarize this. So they have given the information about the uh, deep sand filter bed. So they have given the length, width, and the depth of the bed, and they have mentioned the porosity. So the bed has to be backwash at a flow rate. So when we backwash, the bed get expanded. So during backwashing, if the terminal settling velocity of the sand particle is 0.05 meter per second, the expanded depth bed depth is. So we have to use two formulas where L represents the depth of the expanded bed is equals to one minus porosity of the unexpanded bed before expansion into the depth of the bed that is before expansion divided by one minus porosity of expanded bed. To calculate the porosity of the expanded bed, we use this formula where V B is the backwash velocity and V T is the terminal settling velocity. Raised to power 0.22. After calculating the porosity of the expanded bed, we have placed that uh, information in this equation, and after adding all the required data, we calculated the length of the expanded bed, uh, depth of the expanded bed. <coughs> so, coming back to the next question, the our uh, wastewater is to be disinfected with a 35 mg per liter of chlorine to obtain 99% kill of microorganism. The number of microorganisms remain alive at time t is modeled by they have mentioned some equation and t is equal to n0 where n0 is the number of microorganisms at time t is equal to 0 and k is the rate of scale. The wastewater flow rate is 36 meter cube per hour and rate of scale k 0.23 minute per minute. If the depth and width of the chlorination tank respectively are 1.51 respectively, the length of the tank is. Now we have to calculate the length of the tank. So they have one they have given one of the equation which is nt is equal to n naught e raised to power minus kt where nt is the number of market organisms here number of microorganisms at time t where n0 is the number of microorganisms at time t is equal to 0. k here in the question they have mentioned as rate of kill. l here l t is the time. I hope this equation is now clear. Now moving ahead. So how much n0 will be? Let us read the question once again. So n0 they have mentioned at time t the water is to be disinfected with 35 mg of chlorine to obtain 99% kill of microorganism. So 99% kill of microorganism means that out of 100% they will kill 99%. So basically only 1% will be remaining after the chlorine addition of this much chlorination. So NT means 1% microorganism that are remaining at time t that is 1% because 99% will get killed by the addition of this much chlorine. 
so basically nt is 1% that means we can write it as 0.01 nt is 0.01 99% efficiency n not here means number of microorganisms on the time t is equal to 0 so nt is equal to n not e raised to minus k t so we can write it like that n not by nt e raised to minus k t so this basically means one uh, 0 0.01 because initially if something is there and one percent of n naught will be remaining so this can we can write as 0 0.01 e raised to minus k t so i hope it is clear that n naught from if the initial concentration, if the initial micron number of microorganisms at t is equal to 0. So, this is the initial number of microorganisms, n t is the 1% of n naught. So, 0 0.1. So, if n t by n naught is to do 0 0.01, you will get. Now, the equation is if we write it, e ratio of k t is equal to 0 0.01. The rate of kill they have mentioned as 0 0.23 per minute e is equal to 0 0.23 into t is equal to 0 0.01 so minus 0 0.23 into t will give you ln 0 0.01 so if you do this is 0 0.01 T will comes out T comes out to be minus 4.605 divided by minus 0 0.23. So it is 20. Now we should we don't know the minute. So here they have mentioned so k is per minute. So obviously time will be in minute 20 minutes. Now Knowing the time, 20 minutes, the question here we know that T comes out to be 20 minutes. Now we have to calculate the volume because here the aim of this question, the, they are telling us to calculate the length of the tank. So, volume of the tank is equal to discharge into time. Discharge in the question they have mentioned as 36 meter cube per hour. So, 36, we got time 20, 20 minute if we convert into R, it will be 20 by 60. So, it will be 12 meter cube. I hope this is clear. So, basically, they have given in the form of meter cube per hour. Now, if we divide, we got answer in minute. So, if we divide by 60 minute, uh, for R, it will be converted into R. RR will get cancelled. We will get 12 meter cube. So, volume we know 12 meter cube. So, volume we can write it as L into B into H as 12 meter cube. So, the depth and the width they have mentioned as 1.5 into 1. So, 1.5 into 1 L into 12. So, L will be 2L upon 1.5, which will come out to be 8 meter. So, I hope this is, uh, is it clear or you have any other doubt? So, just I will again repeat this question. So, they are asking a waste water is to be disinfected with 35 milligram per liter of chlorine to obtain 99 percent of the kill so here is the catch they are telling 99 percent they will kill the microorganisms if they are adding this much amount of chlorine the number of microorganisms alive at time t is modeled so they have given the equation through which they get to know that what is the amount of microorganisms that are alive at time t using this equation and 
देर सेलिंग वेर एन नॉट इज द नंबर ऑफ आइसोडम एट टाइम टी इज इक्वल टू जीरो वेर के इज द रेट ऑफ सेल द वेस्ट वाटर फ्लोरेट इज थर्टी सिक्स मीटर क्यूब पर आर एंड के इज जीरो पॉइंट टू थ्री पर मिनट इफ द डेप्थ एंड द विथ ऑफ द क्लोरिनेशन टैंक आर वन पॉइंट फाइव मीटर एंड वन मीटर रेस्पेक्टिवली द लेंथ ऑफ द टैंक इज सो दे हैव गिवेन अ सम इक्वेशन वी हैव टू यूज द सेम इक्वेशन टू कैलकुलेट द वैल्यू ऑफ टी सो एन टी इज इक्वल टू एन नॉट ई रेशो माइनस के टी वेर एन टी मीन्स नंबर ऑफ माइक्रोजन एट टाइम टी एन नॉट मीन्स एट टाइम टी जीरो my number of magnitude at t equals to 0 sir screen sharing has been stopped okay i think by mistake yeah so is it visible yes sir now visible yeah okay so uh, so in this question they have given us this equation from which they generally model it how much organisms are remaining at time t n t here means number of microorganisms at time t where n not means number of microorganisms at time t is equals to 0 k means rate of kill t is the time so they are asking 99% will get killed like they want to kill 99% of microorganisms so at time t the n t will be 1% of n not The amount of microorganisms still present, only one percent of n not. So we can write zero point zero one n not. N not is the initial microorganism time t is equal to zero. After adding this information in the equation, we can get zero point zero one e raised to the minus k t. So from here, we solve for value t. We get t as twenty minutes. So we get t as twenty minutes. From T, we calculate the volume of the tank. Volume of tank. So after calculating the volume of the tank, we know volume of tank is L into B into H. From there, L into B into H, we calculate the value of L. So L comes out to be 12 upon 1.58 meter. So I hope this is clear now. So last question. This is the question. 40th 2019 it came in set 1 in civil engineering gate exam so in the they are mentioned a sample of air analyzed at 0 degree celsius and at 1 atm pressure is reported to contain 0.02 ppm <coughs> part per million of no2 so assume the gram molecular mass of no2 is as 46 And its volume at zero degree Celsius and one atm pressure are twenty twenty two point four liters per mole. Twenty two point four liters per mole. The equivalent NO two concentration would be. <coughs> so basically, they are telling us the equivalent NO two concentration milligram per cubic meter would be. So In question, they have itself mentioned that the sample of air analyzed at zero degree and one atm pressure is reported to contain 0.2 ppm parts per million. So, what is meant by one ppm NO2? So, one one ppm NO2. What does it mean actually? One ppm NO2 means one part of One part of NO2 present in a 10 raised to our six part of air. So first we have to understand what is meant by ppm parts per million. So one part of NO2 in 10 raised to power out of in 10 raised to our six part of air. So can we write it as one meter cube of NO2 in Tens power six meter cube of air. So we can write this, and we know that at STP, at STP, that is at standard pressure and temperature, standard temperature pressure, one mole of NO two occupies. 
22.4 liters of volume so this came from where so we know at stp v is equals to n into 22.4 liter so where n is the number of mole v is the volume so one for one mole of no2 occupies 22.4 this is 22.4 liters of volume so one mole of one mole of no2 occupies 22.4 liters of volume now so at stp so in in the last slide we wrote like one mole of no2 occupies 22.4 liters of volume at stp we have written it so we can write it like that also one mole of no2 occupies 0.0224 meter cube of volume at stp so we are converting liter to meter cube so 1 meter cube is equal to 1000 liters so based on that we are calculating at in terms of meter cube now we can write like since one mole of n2 occupies this much meter cube of volume so we can write that one meter cube contains one meter cube of no2 contains 1 upon 0.0224 moles which is equivalent to 44.64 moles so now we know that 1 meter cube of contain 44.64 moles and based on the molecular weight of no2 one so let's move to the next slide so now we know that 1 mole of no2 how much gram it contain what is the molecular weight 14 plus 32 46 gram knowing this so here we mention so basically 1 mole of no2 contains 46 gram here what does it represent 1 meter cube contain 1 meter cube of no2 contain 44.6 moles 44.64 moles so act so then 1 meter cube of no2 is equals to 44.64 moles this is in moles and in one mole we know that the uh, no2 contains 46 gram so 44.64 into 46 gram if we multiply we will get 2053.57 gram so now but we know that the 1 meter cube of no2 contain the 2 uh, 2053.57 gram no2 now in the question they are asking about 0.02 ppm so so can we write 0.02 meter cube so 0.02 meter cube of no2 contains 0.02 into 2053.57 gram so it will come out to be 2053.57 it comes out to be 41. 0.7 grams of NO2. Now that that we calculated in terms of 0.02 meter cube of NO2 to for 0.02 ppm. 
0.02 parts per million of NO2 it will be 0.02 meter cube of air NO2 sorry 0.02 NO2 in 10 to the power 6 meter cube of air so so we from 0.02 meter cube of of NO2 contain 47 41.07 gram of NO2 so we can write 41.07 gram per 10 to the 6 meter cube of air can we write it like that 41.7 per into since it is per 10 to the 6 this is gram per meter cube since it is 10 to the 6 we can write it as microgram 41.07 microgram per meter cube so answer is 41.07 microgram per meter cube uh is it clear or i should explain it once more sir once again yeah okay yes so in this question the question saying a sample of air they have analyzed a sample of air at the 0 degree celsius and 1 atm pressure and they reported that 0.02 ppm of no2 is present assuming gram molecular mass of no2 is 46 and its volume at 0 degree and 1 atm pressure at 22.4 liters per mole the no2 concentration in microgram per meter cube so they are asking the equivalent no2 concentration in microgram per meter cube how much it will be in the question initially they are mentioned that it is present 0.02 ppm okay so they are they want to know the equivalent no2 concentration in microgram per meter cube so we understood the question first so based on the data first we should know what is meant by ppm 1 ppm no2 means one part of no2 is present in 10 raised to the 6 part of air so ppm basically means parts per million parts per million so 1 ppm means one part of no2 present in 10 raised to the 6 part of air so because ppm refers to parts per million knowing this can we write it like that okay 1 meter cube of no2 is present in 10 raised to the 6 meter cube of air okay I think till here it is clear. So how we write one part one meter cube of NO2 is present in 10 to the 6 meter cube of air. We know in our question it is mentioned its volume at 0 degree Celsius and 1 atm pressure as 22.4 liters per mole. So one mole of NO2 occupy 22.4 liters of volume. This is given already. This is this we know, okay, because it is given in the question. Its volume at zero degree and one atm pressure is twenty two point four liters per mole. Now moving ahead, using the same equation that one mole of NO two occupies twenty two point four liters of volume. So after converting liters to meter cube, so one meter cube is equal to thousand liters. so knowing this so we can convert in the form of volume meter cube so we can say one mole of no2 can occupy 0.0224 meter cube of volume at stp okay now since we know that the one mole of no2 occupies this much meter cube of volume at stp reverse can be say that in one meter cube of no2 contains so to understand this one can we uh, can we write it like this see here we are telling one mole of no2 occupies this much volume of at stp can we in reverse can we say this that this much meter cube 0.024 meter cube of volume occupy this much uh, is occupied by the this much volume is occupied by the one mole of no2 This much volume, 0.02 meter cube volume, 
is occupied by this one mole of NO2. So for one meter cube of one meter cube volume is occupied by the one upon zero point zero two two four. This is two eight. This is zero point zero two moles. Can we reverse this? Say this. So this is what I have said. If one mole of NO2 occupies this much meter cube of volume at STP, we can write also like that. Okay, this much meter cube of volume is occupied by this much mole of NO2. So for one meter cube, we divided one mole by 0.0 this much mole. So basically, in one meter cube of volume, this much mole of NO2 is present. This we understood. Now next step. In one mole of NO2, based on the theoretical molecular weight, based on the molecular weight, we know 46 gram is present. Okay, so one mole of one mole of NO2 contains 46 gram. So here we know one meter cube NO2 contains this much moles. To convert moles into gram, we know one mole contains this much. So 44.6 mole will get multiplied by gram. To get total gram, so one meter cube of NO2 is contained this much gram of NO2. Okay, now the question is since it is in meter cube, but the question they are asking in microgram per meter cube. Micro in question, if we look, they are asking at microgram per meter cube. So one meter cube of NO2 we know this much gram it contains. In question, they are telling about 0.02 ppm. Equivalent they want about 0.02 ppm. Like equivalent to this, how much microgram per meter cube is present? So if 0.02 meter cube of NO2 is present, so how much gram it will consist of NO2? So 0.02 into 2053.57 3.57 gram of NO2 it will contain. Knowing this, now we know 0. This much meter cube of NO2 contains this much gram of NO2. So, and initially we wrote like, okay, what does mean by parts per million? So we are just splitting 0.02 ppm in this form only. So we can write it as 0.02 meter cube of NO2. This you are telling the slow six meter cube of air. This is what we wrote. Okay, but in question they are asking us in the form of meter cube per microgram per meter cube. And this much meter cube, we just now calculated is how much equivalent to gram? This 41.07 gram of NO2. So we just place the value. Okay, 41 per divided by 10 to the 6. So basically, if we if we write like this, 41.07 gram divided by 10 to the 6 meter cube of air. Okay, now can we write this entire expression in a single line? For 41.07 gram per 10 to the 6 meter cube of air. Now, since we are adding per, we can shift this to in the numerator, and we can write 41.07 into 10 to the 6 ratio minus 6 gram per meter cube. Since 10 to the 6 minus 6, we can refer it as a microgram. I wrote microgram per meter cube here. Because question is asking in terms of microgram per meter cube. Is it clear or should I explain it once again? Hello. If in case there, if you have any doubt, you can please let me know. Like I can again explain the same question. Let me tell you, you need. Should I explain it once again? Sir, I couldn't get the concept from uh, the point where you are saying about one mole of NO2 occupies 0.0224 meter cube of volume, and what? you have converted that into one meter. How much uh, moles will be occupied in one meter? Till then, it's okay, sir. You till where it's okay? Your, your voice is your voice is uh, like. Uh, Emma, uh, can you please repeat once again, Lakshmi Tejasvi? Till where it is okay. Here it is. Till till here it's okay. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Till it's perfect till here. Till here you understood, right? Okay. Yes, sir. Now I will explain it other way. 
if you are clear till here now we will move <coughs> see the question is asking about 0.02 ppm part per million right 0.02 ppm parts per million of no2 so 0.02 parts per million means 0.02 parts of no2 in 10^-6 parts of air okay we can similar write this as 0.02 meter cube of no2 in 10^-6 parts of air okay the meter cube in 10^-6 parts of air i hope this is clear from the up till here meter cube is clear but as of now the question is in the form of they are asking us how much this will be in terms of microgram per meter cube okay so till here it is meter cube so i should know that okay 0. how much gram of no2 will be present in 0.02 meter cube of volume okay in question they are telling 0.02 ppm no2 which means 0.02 parts of no2 in 10^-6 parts of air we can write it like that 0.02 meter cube of no2 is present in 10^-6 meter cube of air this is meter cube of air now but in the question they want in terms of microgram per meter cube to understand to know calculate in terms of microgram per meter cube we should know how much gram of meter cube or microgram of meter cube microgram is present in this much meter cube of n2 so we don't know how much microgram this is equivalent to okay this till we don't know the question is asking in terms of microgram per meter cube but still we don't know how much this volume is in terms of microgram so now let's begin with the question you told till here you understood okay 1 meter cube contains 0.44.64 uh, moles okay now but we want to know how much in terms of grams we want to know in terms of grams so based on the norm so uh, knowing based on the molecular weight this is based on the molecular weight we know 1 mole of no2 contains this much gram of no2 right tejas uh, lakshmi tejas ki is it clear till here yes sir it's clear ha okay so here in this in uh, just this. till here we only know that 1 meter cube no2 contains this much moles okay but we want in terms of gram to know in terms of gram we have to convert this mole in terms of gram so in terms of gram if we want to convert we should know this 1 mole of no2 contain 46 gram of no2 so therefore 1 mole 1 meter cube of no2 this is in moles so total it should contain 44.64 into 46 this much gram is it clear tejas tejas yes sir okay like to convert that mole into gram we did this step i hope it is clear so if one mole contain this much gram in the previous step we know that this much mole then how much 44.64 mole gram it will contain so 44 into 64 moles into 46 gram that is 2053.57 gram now we know one meter cube we want 0.02 meter cube of no2 because in the question they are asking in terms of microgram per meter cube if we write it like this so basically we are converting this thing into gram so for 0.02 meter cube of no2 so if we multiply 0.02 into 205 because this is just a unitary method we calculated for one so by for 0.02 it will be multiplied with 0.02 we got 41.07 gram of no2 now we know this much 
मीटर की वो पैनोटो इज प्रेजेंट इन फोर्टी वन पॉइंट लाइक दिस मच वॉल्यूम कंटेन दिस मच ग्राम ऑफ एनो टू सो नाउ सो अगेन आई विल राइट इट जस्ट जीरो पॉइंट जीरो टू पीपीएम now it is clearly understood 0.02 meter cube of no2 upon 10 to 6 meter cube of air i hope it is clear till here now to convert into the gram i calculated it here right 0.02 meter cube of no2 contains 41.07 gram of no2 so we can write it as 41.07 gram of no2 divided by 26 meter cube of air now can we write it like that 47 41.07 into 10 to minus 6 gram per meter cube of air then can we write it like this 41 microgram Per meter cube of air, this is what we are writing, right? Zero forty-one point zero seven microgram per meter cube. Is it clear, Lakshmi Kajal? Is it clear? Yes, sir. Or should yes, I? Yes, sir. It's clear. Okay. So I will repeat the entire section once again. Okay. So it will be easy to follow up. So in the first question. they are telling that the ammonia exists in two forms first is ammonium ion and ammonia based on the ph so they are telling if ph is the only deciding factor for proportion of two constituent which one of the following is correct so based on the ph first we know that there are three forms of ammonia free ammonia organic ammonia nitrite and nitrate based on the condition of ph if ph is less than 8 all ammonia is in the ammonium form if ph is equal to 9.5 50% ammonium 50% ammonium exists if ph is greater than 11 all ammonia is in the form of ammonia so based on the uh, given option the option 7 uh, d option fits correct because at ph less than 8 all ammonia is in the form of ammonium so ph d is correct now in the second question they have given the information regarding the sedimentation basin so okay now they are asking us the renewable efficiency of this particle they have given the diameter of one particle 25 micrometers they have given the remaining information like flow rate length width and depth of the tank and they are telling settling velocity of the particle given by stokes law so and every other information like density dynamic viscosity and gravitational acceleration is given and if the incoming water contains particles of diameter 25 micrometer they are telling the removal efficiency of this particle is we know that the removal efficiency is equals to settling velocity by overflow rate into 100 since it is settling velocity is given by stokes law the formula for cal cal calculating the settling velocity is gs minus 1 g rho w d square upon 18 mu where the overflow rate formula we know q by bl knowing this if we add the given information in every equation we will easily calculate the settling velocity and overflow rate so from that we can calculate the efficiency so efficiency based on our uh, uh, answer settling velocity is 65.38 so nearest option is 65 so we mark the 65 as an option okay so till here i hope it is clear now the second third question is in third question they are given the information about the uh, particles uniform uh, sand filter bed before expansion and they are asking the depth of the expansion bed expanded bed we know that the expanded bed depth is lx is equals to 1 minus uh, uh, porosity of the before expansion of the bed and this in the depth of the uh, uh before expansion of the bed and divided by the 1 minus porosity of the expanded bed this is the depth of the 
expanded bed and this is depth before expansion depth of the bed before expansion we know we first calculated the porosity porosity is given by backwash velocity from the terminal velocity divided by 0.22 from this we after calculating the porosity of the expanded bed we uh, calculate after calculating this we placed it in the equation the main equation of this one and then we calculated the length of the expanded bed okay from here till here and in the meantime we calculated the backwash velocity since terminal settling velocity they have given in the question but backwash velocity they have not given so we calculated the backwash velocity using q upon bl using this formula we calculated the backwash velocity and after placing the information in this equation we got porosity of the expanded bed using the porosity of the expanded bed we calculated the depth of the expansion bed i hope it is clear till now okay now comes the another question where they are telling the waste water is to be disinfected with 35 mg per liter of chlorine and they are telling to obtain 99% kill of organism the number of microorganisms remain alive is modeled using this equation n0 is equal to n nt is equal to n0 e raised to minus kt where n0 is number of microorganisms that time t is equal to 0 and k is the rate of kill the waste water flow rate they have mentioned and they have given the value of k here k means the rate of kill which they have mentioned it here they have given the depth width of fluorination tank to be 1.5 meter and width is 1 meter the length of the tank they are asking us to calculate so using the given equation nt is equal to n0 e raised to minus kt we uh, see they wants to kill 99% of microorganisms so at time t only 1% of organism microorganisms will remain alive so 1% of initial uh, microorganism so after 0.1 n0 so if we place it here we will get e ratio minus kt 0.01 so solving it like that so from here we calculate the value of time t t came out to be 20 minutes from t we calculated the volume of the tank that is q into t from the volume of the tank in volume is equal to l into b into h we calculated the length of the tank length came out to be 8 meter i hope it is clear till now now comes the last question the last question seems to be a bit tricky so the approach of this question should be so they have in this question they have told they have analyzed a sample of air at 0 degree and 1 atm pressure is reported to contain 0.02 ppm of NO2. Assume gram molecular mass of NO2 is 46 and its volume at 0 degree and 1 atm pressure is 22.4 liter per mole. The equivalent NO2 concentration in microgram per meter cube cubic meter would be based on the understanding of ppm. We know ppm means one part of NO2 present in 10 to 6 part of air. We can write it as 1 meter cube of NO2 present in 10 to 6 meter cube of air. So, based on the question, just so since question talks about 0 0.02 ppm, we can write 0 0.02 ppm NO2 means 0 0.02 meter cube of NO2 present in 10 to 6 meter cube of air. To know since it is in meter cube, we and question is asking in terms of microgram per meter cube, we have to convert this meter cube in terms of microgram. So, to convert microgram at STP, we know 1 mole of NO2 occupies 22.4 liter of volume, which is given in the question. Since we know 1 mole occupies this much volume, so 1 mole of NO2 occupies 22.4 liter. In terms of meter cube, 1 mole of occupies this much volume of at this much volume of NO2 at STP. So, reversing can be say that 0 0.02 meter cube of volume contains 1 mole of NO2. So, 1 meter cube contains 1 upon 0 0.02 to 4 moles of NO2. So, it comes out to be this much moles. So, reverse if we write, we will write 1 meter cube of NO2 contains 
44.64 moles since it is in terms of moles we don't know we have to calculate it in terms of gram to calculate in terms of gram we should know how much mole is equivalent to how much gram so it is based on the formula 1 mole of NO2 molecular weight contains 46 gram of N2 so if 1 mole of NO2 contains 46 gram of N2 then how much mole will how much this much mole will contain the how much gram so basically 44.64 into 46 gram that will give the total gram of NO2 present in this 44.64 mole of N2 so this much gram N2 it contains 1 meter cube of N2 contains this much gram of N2 okay but question talks about 0.02 meter cube of air so 0.02 meter cube contains this much gram of N2 if we place this in the form okay 0.02 meter cube of N2 this so this comes out to be this much meter cube is equivalent to this much gram so can we write it like this 41.07 to tension minus 6 which we can write in terms of microgram which eventually we can write in terms of this 41.07 is it clear nikesh and lakshmi tejashvi is it clear yes sir clear okay lakshmi is it clear yes sir yes sir okay, okay. thank you so now we will uh, end our session here only so thanks for joining we will continue the sir. session in next week again okay thank you okay sir thank you sir.